What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Frozen Electronics. Today I have a huge haul. My dad and I uh, went out today and did a whole bunch of shopping. We went to a couple of electronic stores and actually I've already started to put stuff on the shelf so I have to pull it back off so I can show you everything that I got today and a whole bunch of other updates and uh, a package that's been apparently sitting on my f the floor of our living room. It fell off the shelf where the mail gets put and I, th I remember it showing up and I remember one of my roommates telling me, oh, a package showed up for you. And I was on my way out at the time and so I just saw it sitting there and I was like, oh cool, went out for the day, came back, forgot about it. About four or five days later, I was like, didn't a package come? And for some reason, I thought it was a dream. I was like, oh no, that's right, I wasn't even expecting anything. Um, and then my dad, while he was here, we were just having a couple beers, found this package on the floor and anyway, I'll show you what it contains. I'll save that for later on. The first thing that came, was more samples from Texas Instruments. These ones I was a bit more excited about. Dave over at the EEV blog did a whole uh, video on these. If you go into his playlists, there should be a category or a playlist uh, that's about batteries and charging. And he does a whole video on uh, how to make uh, a battery charge display using these chips. These are called LM3914s and they're a dot slash bar display driver. So you can use 10 LEDs in a row to show anything. Uh, you know, how much something is charged, uh, a percentage of anything from zero to nine or one to 10 or however you wanna look at it. Um, it's pretty easy to use, these chips. Um, they just measure a voltage and it's, if it's in between these two ranges, it'll change whatever LED is on to reflect that. So these are really cool. They come in a dip package, very easy for beginners to use. So if you have something that needs to have a battery gauge or uh, you know a sensor that's recording some sort of something, you can use this to just make a very basic display to show it. Now the reason it's called a dot slash bar display driver is you can have it work as a bar graph where when it's at the lowest, one LED will come on and then as the voltage increases, it'll add LEDs and it's like a bar graph going up and down. Or you can have it in dot mode where only one LED turns on at a time so you can save power. Because of course having one LED on takes between five and 20 milliamps. Having 10 on, you're up to, you know, you know, at least 200 milliamps, if not more, depending on your configuration, of course. Uh, and Dave talks about all this in his video, so I'm not gonna go over it again here, but those came today, so that was cool. Now, I went to the electronics store here in Ottawa, the one that I don't usually go to because it's further away, although they have more prototyping stuff. Um, they're, they're aimed at different markets, really. The one I usually go to is called Gervais. They're aimed more at older analog guys that have been fixing stuff and designing older analog stuff. Uh, they do have some digital stuff, but they have tons of components, all sorts of connectors, uh, you know, just everything you can imagine. Heat shrink, uh, like cabinets full of resistors and capacitors. Um, uh, you'd have to go on the place to see what I mean. Active is different. You know, they carry more oscilloscopes. I think Gervais only has one oscilloscope that they sell there and it's this crappy little Chinese one. Uh, Active actually has one of the Agilent InfiniVision. I mean, it's literally the base model. It's the 2002, so it's 70 megahertz, only two channels, but still they carry it there. They also have, oddly enough, the Agilent version of the Rigol DS1052E, uh, and it's called the DSO1052 something by Agilent. And it's literally like 800 bucks, whereas the exact same one made by Rigol is 350 bucks. I should tell the owner there that. They have tons of Fluke and Agilent multimeters, whereas Gervais only has, uh, they have a couple UNI-T multimeters, nothing too special, but, um, and then Active has, they carry SparkFun stuff, for example. They carry Arduinos, BeagleBones, Raspberry Pis. They carry microcontrollers uh, in individual packages. They have resistors and capacitors and stuff to loose transistors, but not as many as Gervais. Um, they're sort of taking advantage of this new re maker revival, I think. Although Active Electronics has been there almost as long as Gervais, they've sort of split off in two different directions. Anyway, enough talking about Ottawa. Something I got that I really needed, a whole big, uh, one of the big reels of Solderwick. Uh, as you can see, it's $12.99. Um, they had, this is 25 feet or 7.6 meters. They had five foot rolls for 
I think it was seven or eight bucks, and then 25 foot for 13 bucks. I'm like, well, that's an easy decision. Uh, this is the really wide stuff. I actually prefer the wider stuff. I do have some skinny stuff, though I rarely use it, because if I'm using solder wick, it usually means I want to suck up a whole bunch of solder, because I'm either desoldering something or touching something up, and I find that the thick stuff, I mean, it can just hold tons more solder. I find it easier to use. I got one of these boards that Dave uh, had some sent to him and reviewed them, the Smart Board. I've had some QFN packages for a while that I've wanted to prototype, but I haven't had any boards to prototype them with. And then when I realized that they had the Smart Boards at Active, I was like, cool. Um, I wish I had gotten a bunch more of them. Um, and unfortunately, uh, I mean, I did get one of the right sizes. Oh, that's right, on the back, I think. I'm gonna open it up, because I think on the back they have different sizes now that I'm remembering. Oh no, not this one. So this one just has the one particular size of QFN. I think it's got a bunch of spots where you can put bypass caps and, uh, you know, other stuff. And then, of course, it comes with the pins to break out all the pins to the side. So I'm gonna have to actually go on the website and look at uh, everything. Of course, you're supposed to use one of those thin tips and push the um, solder down. I might do that. I might just drag solder it. I'm not really sure yet. Uh, this is uh, QFN 48 pin 0.5 millimeter pitch. This is actually QFP or QFN. Um, of course, they are on essentially the same footprint if you're, you know, unless you're doing a QFN, in which case you can make the pins a lot shorter if you want to do surface mount or if you're doing reflow. I'm actually going to turn the camera just a smidge this way because I'm actually going to be facing this way more. I got, yeah, yeah, a few one meg potentiometers uh, that I've actually needed for a while. Uh, I have a lot of pots, but I just didn't have very many high value ones. This is a four AA holder with a switch. Uh, this is great for uh, prototyping mobile projects or anything that you're not going to be at your bench while testing it. Um, of course, four AA's in series can give you six volts, which is great. You can use a low dropout regulator and power microcontrollers, or you can use a 3.3 volt regulator and still power microcontrollers and get a lot more out of your batteries. I got one of these flux remover pens, which I've needed for a while. That's actually gonna go straight out of the package and straight into my little holder here where I keep a bunch of my stuff. Oh, sorry, the stupid camera. Uh, I have this little holder right here. I can't even see what you're seeing. There we go. F forgive me. Uh, that's got my... Whoa. This is one great video, ain't it? Talk about me being a freaking amateur. Um, so it's got my screwdrivers in it. The ones that I use the most. Sorry, this is really hard to do. Uh, it's got my flux pen from Kester, my really nice uh, tweezers, my flashlight, which is a really super bright one, my um, Real Canadian Tools brand um, screwdriver. I don't know if I've talked about these in another video, but they're really nice. And then this is the uh, screwdriver that I got sent to me for winning a trivia contest on Twitter. It's a United Chemicon branded screwdriver, but it's got all the tips inside it. You just unscrew the end. So this is a really handy screwdriver uh, if you're going to be out in the field, or even if I just don't want to pull out the big case that has all the tips for this one in it. They're just handy and right there. Anyway, my point being that my new flux remover pen is going right in there, right beside my flux pen, because I use my flux pen a lot, but then having to use Q-tips and um, isopropyl alcohol afterwards, it's a pain in the ass. It doesn't even work that well. So uh, this is also the MG Chemicals brand. Very good brand, pretty much the best brand you can buy for anything. My uh, Super Flux Wick, um, Super Flux Wick, what am I talking about? My Super Solder Wick was also MG Chemicals. Very good brand. Uh, oh yeah, these I got at the dollar store. Those are completely unrelated. Some of these uh, GU10 lights for one of my lamps. Uh, cable ties, very handy. Every electronics uh, shop or bench should have cable ties. I have a whole bunch of different sizes. These are nice, thin, smaller ones that are good for uh, inside. If you're repairing anything and there's wires uh, hanging, you can just um, cable tie them to something nearby to keep them nice and neat. Those are a must have. Uh, there's the other potentiometer and I think that's everything from Active. Um, I was gonna spend more money, but even everything I just showed you there, I feel like I already took something out that I forgot about. Anyway, 
That was already getting up in dollars. I'm not going to say exactly how much I blew there, but uh, it definitely wasn't a small amount. Sorry, I'm just going to have a sip from my drink. I'm a little bit drunk, actually. Uh, not that I'm encouraging anyone to drink, but my dad and I had a few beers, so probably why I'm talking so much, probably why it's already 10 minutes, I'm only for, through the first bag. Now, everything else I got um, was sort of with electronics in mind. I got a photo frame so that I can do boards. Oh, I know what I forgot. It's downstairs. I bought transparencies for transferring um, designs uh, of board layouts um, for doing the exposure of uh, pre-sensitized circuit boards. I'm going to do a whole video on how to do that. I've got my positive developer, my ferric chloride there. I've got some pre-sensitized boards. I've actually got a layout that I want to try already. So that'll be great. Um, so you stick the board in there. You stick the transparency underneath the glass. You clamp it all in place. Put it down on the tabletop and expose it with the light for about 20 minutes in the case of a fluorescent light. Uh, turn everything off, flip it over, soak it in the positive developer. Anyway, I'll show you the steps. But I finally got a photo frame because that's something I've needed for a while, knowing that this was going to be happening soon. Oh well, yeah, I got a random CD by a Canadian band called Jets Overhead. This was their first album, which was actually not even an album, it's just an EP. It's got five songs on it. Awesome Canadian band if you're into... Uh, they're kind of alt-rock, melodic rock. Almost a little bit of shoegaze in there. Uh, excellent Canadian band. Check out their albums No Nations and Bridges. Excellent, excellent. Uh, can't say enough about the band. They're awesome. They're from the west coast of Canada. Uh, they're just amazing. Uh, some random um, iPhone ca iPod cases for my buddy. Now here's something I'm going to be doing a teardown on. This, I better get it out of the wrapper is a light gun. You remember how they made those for the NES and the SNES? Well, this is for the Sega. For those of you that don't know the Sega, um, and actually this would fit in the port for the Commodore as well, but I'm almost 100% sure that this was made for the Sega, because I remember someone telling me that the Sega had a light gun, but that it wasn't very popular and there weren't a lot of games for it. So I managed to find one at the thrift shop today. So I'm going to do a tear down on that later on. It'll be interesting to see how these things actually work. Um, I believe that it, there's actually some feedback from the TV. It's actually taking a picture of where you're pointing at on the TV or something like that. Or the birds or whatever is on the screen. I think they, they're strobing faster than the human eye can see, but compared to everything around it on the screen, it can tell if you're pointing at the target. There, there was something like that. I can't actually remember how they work. But anyway, we'll, we'll tear that down at some point and take a look at that. I got a disposable camera, which just happened to be at the uh, thrift shop for three bucks, so I thought, why the hell not? Because of a magic trick I saw, um, where this guy made a deck of cards electrified so that you can do this trick with a girl where you get her to kiss you and it shocks her. I mean, it's not like a, a dangerous shock, it's just a little spark and it gets them to jump. Um, and you need the circuit from inside a uh, flash disposable camera like this to do it. So I've wanted one of these for a while as well, so that'll be fun. Um, I have the schematic somewhere. I'll have to show you guys once I actually make that because that's going to be a really funny, uh, a really funny trick to pull on someone. You kiss them the first time, or you get them to kiss you or whatever, and you don't have the spark turned on. And you ask them, "Did you feel the magic?" They're like, "No." And they're like, "Oh, I must have been thinking of the wrong card." Hold on, hold on. Squeeze the deck really hard. Think really hard. Okay, kiss me again, and then that time, zap! Because now you're both holding it correctly. You complete the circuit, and they get a nice shock. Um, anyway, it's a funny little uh, trick to play. The thrift shop here in Canada, it's called Value Village. I don't really want to be an ad for them, but they usually have a wall that has a whole bunch of these bags. And these bags typically have random electronics related stuff in them. Um, sometimes there's other random things like that camera or uh, that light gun that I just had. Those were all in the bags. But I found this uh, random power supply that plugs right into the wall from Deer Computer Limited. Uh, and it outputs uh, between 4 and 5.5 volts at around 2.5 amps. So it's actually uh, a decent um, 
It's actually a decent little power supply, so I'm going to hack it up and make it into some sort of little breadboard power supply or something. I love just having random uh, DC barrel jack power supplies like this. They're always handy to have. Uh, there's no switch or anything on it, so I think the amount of current it puts out depends on how much voltage... No, that doesn't make any sense. To be honest, I don't know how it knows what voltage. I think this one is 5 volts. It seems to be what it's marked as, but... Yeah, it's weird that it gives a voltage range like that. I'm not really sure. Anyway, that's beside the point. So that's something else I got. I got socks, and that's everything I got from there. Now, the big score of the day. My dad and I saw this in Value Village, and when I first saw the price on it, I was thinking, eh, you know, it's probably a couple years old. It was probably only worth 100 or 150 bucks new. Uh, actually... I actually got a pretty good deal on it. I'm actually going to peel off the price sticker. I'm not a huge fan of uh, showing people what I pay for things and that sort of thing. So anyway, I got one of these D-Link media stream network things. It's You can uh, use it with wired or wireless LAN. It connects to your local network and streams to your TV. So it's just basically a media box. Um, it is a couple of years old because it still has 802.11g, but for my purposes and my TV that's in my room that I never use because nothing's hooked up to it, this is going to be perfect for it. Literally, when I opened the box up, the box itself was a little bit beat up. You can see the handle's a little bit ripped there and stuff, but everything in there was still sealed. The original batteries were still sealed up, separate from the remote. The remote package was still taped shut with the original tape. The unit itself was still neatly folded up in the wrapper, like no one had ever even opened the wrapper. Because when I refolded it to try and put it away, I couldn't even get it as neat as it was when I pulled it out. And I'm usually pretty picky. So I'm pretty sure that the thing was never used. Brought it home, tested it up, works like a charm. I paid a really nice price for it. Uh, the other things I got today was this old tape deck that had the... Um, had the uh, adapter with it. It needs a little bit of work. I think it just needs a new belt in there. The reason I got this is for Commodore games uh, because you can, this one has a direct input so I can play games that you've downloaded as audio files through your sound card and then record them onto this, pop them into your C64 or your VIC-20, away you go. You can play games. Um, and also just to screw around with, I love screwing around with these old tape decks. Um, Especially the ones that have these weird leather cases that go around them. It's funny, like, this is a realistic, which is, I mean, they're not super cheap and crap, but they're definitely not high-end tape players. They were kind of um, semi-cheap back in the 80s, uh, so they're not a terribly well-known brand. Uh, but it's kind of funny for such a cheap uh, cassette deck that they would even come with this fake leather case. Uh, and it even looks like it has these little hooks on either side for a strap. They used to sell them with these stupid, like, purse straps. Like, you're going to carry your little tape player around with your headphones on like a purse. It's just a riot. And, of course, it also has the built-in speaker, uh, which was a hallmark of uh, old um, uh, of old, um, tape players back in the day. I hate these price tags that have all the little cuts in them. So that when you try and peel them off, they turn into a big freaking mess unless you do it just right. I know it's to stop people from like switching prices on things and screwing around, but all it does is really piss off the owner. I managed to get that one off smoothly, but usually it makes a big mess all over the place. Uh, I think that sums up everything I got. I kind of feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, that's right. The package I talked about that I thought I dreamt. <clears throat> what was actually in it? Well, here's a little clue. First thing that was in there was some dangerous prototype stickers. You know where that's going. Straight onto the engineering notebook. Actually, yeah, we're running out of room on the back here. Um, front? Dangerous prototypes on the front? Yeah, I've got SparkFun and OSH Park, so dan dangerous prototypes is cooler than either of those. So it obviously needs pride of place. I actually have four of these stickers. That's kind of cool. You're Usually you're lucky to get one sticker from a place like that. Now, let me think, where should it go? Yeah, right there. I love how it just looks like my book now contains dangerous prototypes. 
So right above the ESD symbol, we got the dangerous prototypes. I love how they're both like warning symbols almost right on the front cover of my uh, engineering notebook. Anyway, very cool. So that should be a little bit of a clue. Now, I actually won one of their free PCB. Uh, I think it was free PCB Sunday. So they gave me a coupon code. You go on their website to the free PCB section and you get to pick something. Now, the assembled boards are usually about five coupons. Um, the unassembled boards are either one or two coupons. And if there's a board you want that's two coupons, you can ask them to upgrade you and they'll usually just add up, give you the other coupon for free. In my case, there wasn't much actually available on the website at the time, except they have these heat shrink labels for the bus pirate cables. And I was like, that is so cool. So for one coupon, that's what I got. Now, when I first saw this package, I kind of had a feeling that's what was in there. And then today, when I went to open it, I noticed it said printed circuit boards. I'm like, that's weird. Uh, and for some reason, they've also sent me a blank bus pirate board. And it's actually the bus pirate version 3.8, which I can't actually find much information about on the website. The current one seems to be the version 3.6, which is the uh, one that I actually have right here, the assembled one that I actually own. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to try and find the bill of materials and actually solder up this board, which shouldn't be too hard. It's not a very complex board. Um, I'll probably do some of it with hot air, but once you complete one of their circuit boards, they give you another coupon. So you can just keep getting free PCBs. As long as you keep soldering them up and making them, uh, you can keep getting free PCBs from them, which is pretty cool. Anyway, this video is 21 minutes. Um, I've been blabbing on. I'm pretty sure I got everything. Uh, I had a really fun day hanging out with my dad and uh, going shopping for electronics and stuff. He's always been into electronics. He's an analog guy. Um, so a lot of the digital stuff I do, he doesn't really understand. And a lot of the analog stuff he does, I don't understand. So I'm going to try and get some back and forth going. I'm going to try and learn some stuff from him. Hopefully I can get him to learn some digital stuff from me. I'm probably going to give him one of my frozen boards and see if he can learn a little bit about digital programming. Um, but yeah, I'm going to end it here. You'll see a whole bunch of videos coming soon. Now that I've got a whole bunch of new stuff to work on, there should be some really cool videos coming out. All the projects I mentioned through this video, obviously I'm going to film and upload. So anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, uh, share, favorite, whatever you can do. It really helps out um, the cause. The more views, likes, and shares, and all that stuff that I get, the more it encourages me, A, to keep making videos, and B, it encourages other people to come watch. So by doing so, if we can build up a bit of a community, then I can start doing some really awesome stuff. Anyway, thanks again for watching, guys. Uh, come back soon. Check out frozenelectronics.com. There's always new stuff, cool stuff up there. I try and relink every single YouTube video. Mm. By the way, there was a guest post from uh, someone else who's on the EEV blog forum and uh, someone who has apparently watched my videos and gone to my website, he did a guest video, a teardown of a really cool fluke multimeter. So that's on the website at frozenelectronics.com. You can check it out there. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching, guys. Bye.